Okay, boys, today I'm gonna show you what is the best way to do a single PC stream. Okay, so welcome back to the test lab today. So this is the PC that I've been talking about here that I built for that uh, streamer. Her name is Miss Extra. Extra, XRA. I'll leave a link down below. She's a cool gal, go check her out. She'll be streaming Warzone again once I actually ship this thing to her, right? So, before I ship this PC to her, we have to find out what actually is the best way to do a single PC stream. Now, the last time I did this video was when Alder Lake came out, right? And I didn't actually show the setup that I was using before, and there were a lot of complaints like, but Jufus, you didn't use a camera. You didn't actually stream to a real Twitch account. You just used a dummy recording, blah, blah, blah. Newsflash, by the way. If you think you can do a better job, start your own YouTube channel. But some of those criticisms were valid. So here's the setup that we have going today. Here's the single PC stream. This is a 4080 13900K and 64 gigs of that DDR5 that I showed you in that last video. Here is a 4K camera that I have set up, uh, just running on battery right now, HDMI into an Elgato capture card on the bottom. Hello, so we're actually, I'm actually double penetrating the recordings going on here right now, I'm DPing them, okay? Now when streaming in general, whether it be with one PC or two PC, you always have a second monitor for your Twitch chat, your notifications, your donations, your subs, all that stuff, right? Now, this is gonna be the, uh, our secondary monitor here, right? This is gonna be our 1440 p 360 hertz monitor that every COD bro needs to have. So, we're gonna be playing the game in 1440p. We're gonna be having our recording over here with a real camera because she uses a real camera for her stream as well. And real cameras take much more processing power to encode and send to the stream than a regular webcam does, right? So that's why we're actually test fitting a real camera today. Now there are three different ways that we have to encode a stream. We have quick sync. We can use those 16 E cores to encode X264. And then we also have the graphics card to use NVENC. So what we're gonna find out is I'm gonna use all three of these methods to stream to a dummy account on Twitch. We're gonna check the FPS of all three methods. Then I'm gonna download those VODs from that Twitch dummy account, repaste them up in the best bit rate that I can. Then we're gonna compare the quality differences. Because it's not as simple as what gives the higher FPS. You also need to give your audience a good experience, otherwise they're not gonna watch you. So if there's an encoding method that might drop an extra 10 or 15 frames, but it gives the viewer a much better picture and experience, well then it might be worth it. So let's get started then. I'm gonna actually turn the E-cores off and we're gonna do a base run first to see what the max FPS is, then we'll be able to check what each FPS loss is depending on the method after. Okay, so we're gonna do an initial drop here first uh, with the E cores turned off. This doesn't matter, we have to go to actual, our actual run. It is about 240 to 250 FPS, right? Hi, kitty. But we're gonna go to our usual spot to check the FPS. Okay, so doing this stretch of road here, is that 255, 250? 267, 270. So anywhere between, anywhere between 255 and 270 with a 245 dip. All right. So I guess we'll say 245 to 270 is the range here. So as long as we can get around like 230 or 240, I would be happy with that. So that's our baseline then for now. So this, just on first impression here, looks about like a, uh, fuck. God, that's fucking annoying. People sweat more in the pre-lobby than they do the actual damn game. Okay, so it looks like 15 to 20 FPS drop. 
Don't worry, I will put up the VOD for you guys to see after. But let's do this run here. Oh yeah, so it looks like it's uh... 230, 237 to 245, 250. Yeah, that's nice. That's better than I expected. So, oh my god, I'm getting shot, dude. So yeah, we lost, I would say we lost about 20 FPS on average with QuickSync. So I don't know what the quality looks like just yet. Uh... I'll check the VODs after, but that's really good. So we're averaging about 235 to 240 FPS here. So we're average. oh my god, dude. So we're averaging about 235 to 240 FPS. Yeah, I'm dead. All right, whatever. I got the footage that I needed. So for this one, we are using X264 medium. Now... I would say the FPS, oh yeah, it is higher. We're getting like 255, 260 downtown. So, ooh, interesting. So maybe X26, I don't know. I can't actually see the, uh, the stream quality yet. I'll have to watch the VOD after, but X26, X264 medium seems like it's the, the way to go here. Yeah, even, uh... Even just in the plane here, we have about 30 more FPS than QuickSync. Still not as much as, obviously, with no stream enabled whatsoever, but, uh... Yeah, it looks like... I'm gonna go out on the limb here and say X264 Medium is the GOAT. We're gonna try X264 Slow as well, just because I want to see what the FPS versus the quality difference is. But it, but X264 medium is basically just the same as NVENC, right? So if this gives us more FPS than NVENC, then this is going to be the way to go. Yeah, okay. So there, now, we're, now we're between 260, 250 to 260. So this, the X264 medium on the E-course, 270. Yeah. So X264 medium on the E cores is like 5 FPS loss. Wow. That's really impressive. So now we actually do have finally have a, a use for those E cores, like a very, very good use. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. 5 FPS loss. So I, I hope the quality is good because then I'm just gonna use this. I don't even need to I don't even need to test the other ones. I mean I will anyway, but man, that's pretty goaded. Okay, let's try I can I can actually just try um X264 slow right in the same instance here. Okay, so I just swapped it to X264 slow. And I just reopened the window here. So there sh you should be able to see a quality difference. I'm going to go back to the end here. Hopefully I don't get killed. Yeah, the FPS still looks really good. The CPU temperature is a bit higher now, though. Now we're pulling like 185 watts. Just to encode. Yeah, so we're now we're hitting the CPU pretty heavily here. Okay, let me turn around. Oh yeah, look at that, dude. Look at that. 255, 248, 260. So maybe like another 5 FPS. Not even. Maybe like 2 or 3 FPS. Because we're still peaking at 270. Now we're hitting 187 watts. 190 watts. Yeah. So this is, this is hitting the CPU a bit heavier. But her CPU is delitted though, so temperature is not a problem. Yeah, maybe another few FPS. So, yeah, X264 slow. Yeah, maybe another three FPS. So if the quality improvement is much higher with X264 slow over X264 medium, we'll run this probably then. I can't see NVENC having as good of a performance as this. And NVENC, the, the quality of NVENC is not as good 
as X264 slow in the first place. But let's go try NVENC anyway. It's not bad. It's about... It's about... 5 to 10... Oh, there we go. 235. So yeah, this is about 5 to 10 FPS lower than the X264 slow. Which is still really good. If you had, th this would probably be the way to go if you were on a 13700K or a 13600K where you didn't actually have 16 E cores to encode on. Yeah, this is about the same as QuickSync in terms of the FPS, actually. Yeah. So I would say X264 medium has the highest FPS, X264 slow. Second highest FPS, and then QuickSync and NVENC are kind of the same FPS. I'll, I'll put up the side-by-sides on, uh, on your guys' recording here. This is just what I'm seeing off the cuff here, kind of what I'm eyeballing, right? Very interesting, though. Very good. I mean, um, you could argue that all of these methods are viable, right? All of them. Okay, so the footage I'm showing you now is the actual downloaded VODs from the Twitch dummy account. The first one here is QuickSync. Now, the, the most glaring issue is how fuzzy the actual road that we're running on is. Now, I must say that this is quite a substantial improvement over the older QuickSync uh, methods, but it's still not the best picture. Also, you can tell because if you if you look at the green bushes or shrubbery as you run by, they are quite fuzzy as you run past them. Now, as I move the mouse around here as well, look at how blocky the sky looks as well. Very, very blocky. You can actually see the compression happening from the other end. So this one here is NVENC, and it is much, 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 much better than QuickSync. Um, the road is not compression blocky. Now it's more of kind of an anti-aliasing fuzz, but that does make it better for the user. The bushes as well, they're not shimmering. It's more of an anti-aliasing fuzz, and also the sky doesn't have those compression blocks either. So the FPS seems to be pretty much the same between the two methods, but the picture quality on the NVENC is still better. I would say the biggest issue with NVENC is how blurry and kind of aliasy the screen gets as you move the mouse around. But so far, if you had to pick one out of the two, NVENC is definitely the clear winner. So this one is X264 Medium. This one seems to be kind of in between QuickSync and NVENC a little bit. You have kind of that road blockiness is back a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad as the QuickSync version. And also the trees and the shrubbery don't have that shimmering blockiness to them either. The sky also doesn't seem to have those compression blocks in them either. And as, as you can see, the FPS here is quite a bit higher than the other two. So right now, it would kind of be a toss-up between X264 Medium and NVENC, depending on if you wanted the better FPS or you wanted the better user viewing experience. Personally, I would choose the X264 medium here. You can always offset the blockiness a little bit by just increasing your bit rate to Twitch, even though they quote unquote don't accept it. You can kind of still do it anyway. So that's personally where I would go. But if you're following the guidelines, I would leave that up to you. Okay, X264 slow. Now this one's kind of interesting because you still have that road. It's much less than medium, but you still kind of have that road blockiness a little bit. But I can see the biggest advantage with this one is being able to see further away than the other ones. So you can actually go up on the mountain there, or if you want to actually go look downtown, you can kind of see the buildings much clearer further away than the other methods. So I would say that X264 slow kind of gives the user probably the closest replica of what the actual player is seeing as well. So if you saw like a little black dot on the mountain that was a player, the viewer would kind of be able to see that as well. But it's kind of not sure if it's a burger or a nothing burger. I'm not sure if people even pay attention to that, right? Maybe X264 medium is still the way to go. 
Now, here are all four of them side by side. Now, there's no way of me knowing how much YouTube is going to recompress this again to you guys. So I'm not sure what this is going to look like when it's actually published. But see if you can actually guess which one belongs to which encoding method. But no matter which method you choose here, I feel like the viewer is going to have a good experience regardless. So take the information that I shared with you today and then you can kind of make your own decisions. But go ahead and pause the video here and comment down below what order you think they are in and then come back and continue. And there you go. So go back, rewind, check them out, see the differences, see the pixelation, see the boxes, see the view distance. All that good stuff between all four of these different methods. So after reviewing all the footage, it actually looks like NVENC and QuickSync are kind of off the table. Not only from the FPS standpoint, but also from the quality standpoint as well. They just didn't look as good as X264 did. Which we knew anyway, X264 usually does trump any kind of graphics encoding at the same bitrate, right? CPU encoding is always going to be superior. But then the question became X264 medium versus slow. Now, I feel like slow is so far into the uh, diminishing returns territory. I didn't see too much of a quality difference there. Very slight. Then again, the FPS difference was also so minimal that it might as well just run slow, right? So what I'm thinking is... I'm going to leave it on medium for now, and then I have to kind of wait to see what kind of graphics and overlays and animations she runs on her stream. And then I can make a more educated decision at that time, because running a camera and the game, even though it is a 4K camera, only running the game and the camera is quite easy to CPU encode, right? Once you add like 30 animations on the screen, fireworks blowing up and all that shit, it might change the story a little bit. Maybe we might have to go medium, right? And I would say in general, it seems like X264 medium on the E cores is the winner. X264 medium on the E cores gave us the highest FPS, also the second best visual quality for the stream and the viewer. So it seems like a win all around to just use that. So my microphone just died as I was finishing recording, but it doesn't really matter because we got all the data that we needed anyway. So leave a comment down below if this video was helpful to you and if you learned a whole bunch of stuff and if you found some value. But if you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.